what's good, everybody? Welcome into DTL Golf. We're here every single Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. I am the coach, and I got to tell you, what an incredible first week that we had. And I got to tell you, we have guys literally all over the world. We have so much news to talk about today. We'll get to our best bets as well, but you got to remember, if you are brand new to this brand, we're more than just picks. We try to give you the knowledge, hashtag educate and entertain, hashtag knowledge is power. So without further ado, Let's bring in the stars of the show this week. And look who we have. First and foremost, he is live from Mexico. And he doesn't want to rub it in, so he's closed the curtains behind him so we don't see the beat. But yeah. Eddie Hernandez, what's up, man? Hey, pal. How are you? Ski, Steve, good to see you, buddy. Coach, awesome to be yeah. here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's nice and nice and toasty here in uh, Cancun, Mexico. Riding the Hashtag. coattails of my wife. You are dead to me. All of a sudden, you are dead to me. And, of course, he is. Uh, we're still trying to find his official nickname. You guys are going to get a, a merch prize if you come up with it. Steve Scott. He's been here with us for well over a year. Steve, what's up, man? What's going on? I am not in Cancun, uh, but we're going to have this show from Cancun maybe next week or next year because – we got to get. I got to get some tan on this body. I don't know. So <laughs> that's something I can't even get out of my mind right now. Yeah, I can't. that's all right. You don't want. You don't want to get it out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. So we got a lot to talk about, gentlemen, this week. Before we look forward, we must look back. And I got to tell you that history was made at the American Express, and there's been a lot of good, but now there's a little bit of negative. Let's start with the good. So if people missed it because of all the football that was going on on Sunday. Nick Dunlap, a sophomore at the University of Alabama. Shocked the world. He's the reigning, reigning U.S. amateur champion. And, Steve, you know a little something about playing in that big tournament. So he gets the job done in a tournament that Scheffler was there. Xander was there. He played with Justin Thomas, also an Alabama alum, and Sam Burns, who fell down the stretch two double bogeys to finish. Mm -hmm. So, Steve, I'm going to start with you. Just from a winning standpoint, to do it, the first amateur in 32 years since Phil Mickelson did it. That was unbelievable in itself, sir. Yeah, what, what Nick Dunlap did, I mean, just off the charts good. I mean, he was three ahead, fortunately, in that final round. Uh, going into that final round, had a slip up on the seventh hole, uh, hit it out to the right, made it a double bogey, hit it in the water there. But what he did coming down the stretch, he stared down – 16 or a 15 time PGA Tour winner in Justin Thomas and a Ryder Cupper in Sam Burns. And uh, he stepped up every t every single time. He got a little luck on the uh, 17th hole from Burns, who hit it in the water there. But man, did he come up clutch on that final hole with that six foot putt? And he buried it in the heart. And, and all of Alabama and all of amateur golf was like, okay, I, I got to get, I got to get ready to get ready for a PGA Tour event too, because I want to be like Nick Dunlap. Yeah, I tell you what, his coach flew in, Eddie, uh, from Alabama. His parents were there. And yeah. I'll give him a lot of credit. They put a camera on his parents the entire back nine. He got tears from mom before it was even over. But the way that he won, he did get a break that the ball came down on 18. But if you're putting yeah. Sam Burns right next to Nick Dunlap and you say you're tied going into 17, I'm putting my money on Sam Burns. To, to finish strong and not the amateur. It was the other way around. How impressed were you that he got up and down and made the five footer to get it done to beat Christian B by one? Yeah. So I think, I think I, when we were going back and forth on the text, I said, I think he's going to get this up and down. I just had a feeling he's got, he's got the moxie, right? He, with, with everything that, that these kids have nowadays between uh, coaching and fitness and launch monitors and everything else. And then the mental side of it, I mean, you win a U.S. junior and a U.S. amateur, and then all of a sudden you win as a as an amateur on the PGA Tour. These kids are, are just absolutely incredible, and it's like Ludwig who, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. it, it's just it's amazing mm -hmm. because that's all we've been talking about. And now you know Nick comes through and and just super super impressed. Yeah, he becomes the first player to be the reigning U.S. amateur champion to win a PGA Tour event since Tiger Woods did it in 1996. <laughs> the man he beat. Right. We're staring at him right here. So that's history to me. We got yeah. the man on the show. But now, Steve, we got to spin it forward because all the goodwill and all the, oh, he lost $1.6 million. No, 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 no. He's going to get <laughs> he didn't that lose money. Anything. Is, the question is, yeah. where is he going to get it from? Because he was supposed to play in the farmer's insurance, which is 60 miles from where I'm yeah. sitting right now. He withdraws yeah. and says, I'm going back home. I'm all, I'm overwhelmed. I want to see my family and friends. What did you make? I think it's a bad look 
to withdraw from a tournament when you get yeah. a sponsor exemption. But it also yeah. it starts bringing up other stuff like what is he mulling over? Yeah, I mean, you know, is he thinking about going to live? I mean, did they call him and offer him a hundred or so million dollars or more? Who knows? But uh, no, I think it's really overall a really mature decision, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think it, you know, he's taken a step back. He doesn't have to rush anything now. There's no rush on anything. He, he just, I'm sure he doesn't want to go back and do homework at University of Alabama and do go, you know, my imagination would run wild and say, you know what, we'll probably see him at Pebble Beach in another week or maybe the Genesis in a few weeks. Um, he's going to take time to just kind of soak this in and enjoy it because you don't win all the time, and especially at his age. But I mean, to, to go out there and do it, I think it's a really mature decision. It shows me he's got the right parenting, like you mentioned there, he, who was out there watching, and the right team around him to kind of have him just slow down and just take a breath for a second. Eddie, Steve brings up a lot of good points. And here's the deal. Mm -hmm. You go to college to prepare yourself when you're at his level to be a professional. So what else does he have to prove? But then – he now is going to get in or could be eligible to get into every single signature event, every single right. tournament. So as a college sophomore, he has until 30 days after the end of the season, which is in August. So he has until September to turn pro. But in your estimation, I think he turns pro this week. What do you think? I agree. Uh, I agree with you, Coach. I think – I don't think it's – if – if somebody gave me a sponsor's exemption, I get it. He won and, and he's got all the attention of the golf world on him. And who knows, maybe Liv did call him. You know, we don't know, but it's speculation. But he's going to be signing signing some huge deals, I'm sure, within the next few months if he turns professional. Mm -hmm. But I just, you know, when you commit to someone and, and someone like Farmers gives you an exemption, I think you play regardless if you're tired uh, and, and emotionally and mentally worn out. I mean, we get it. It's, it, it's a grind you know, especially when you win on the PGA tour, but, uh, but I would have liked to seen him play, but, uh, but he, you know, he did what was best for him at the end of the day. You have to respect it. I hate the tired excuse. He's the second youngest player to win on the PGA tour since world war two. <laughs> Jordan Spieth was younger. I don't want to hear I'm tired. I want to, I don't want to hear I'm overwhelmed. You're 20 years old. And if I would have told you a week ago that you would win this tournament, beat all the top players in the world and you would start the next week, would you have taken that? 100% you are taking that. I yeah. think it's a horrible look. I think he's a good kid from all yeah. everything. I think he's a good For kid, sure. but I think he's going to turn pro. And if Liv is smart, they may, they start bringing some guys in that are relative today because they have like player 25 to 48 are not relative. They need players like this to shock the world. So what would the offer be? We'll have to wait to be seen. Now, Eddie, you bring up a good point. You brought up branding. You brought up signing deals. Well, Something just broke a little bit ago before we came on the air. And one Tiger Woods, who just left Nike Golf a couple of weeks ago, as did Jason Day, no longer in the yeah. apparel game. Now, he has um, copyrights. They have uh, put some, some things out there that don't look that good, I guess. I'm trying to be polite. But it looks like he's going to go to TaylorMade <laughs> for everything. He's already there with his clubs, but now it looks like apparel. And here's the big part, Eddie. Equity interest in the company, which could be worth tens of millions of dollars long term. Are you surprised that Taylor yeah. made is where he's going to be for everything? I'm not. I'm not. And the reason why is he's been with Taylor made for several years now. And whatever Tiger wears, whether, you know, whether it be with Nike or, you know, his shoe line, people are going to buy it kind of like Air Jordan, right? I go into, you know, play Grove 23. Everything, everybody wants his stuff. He's the GOAT. Tiger, in my opinion, is the GOAT. Uh, so I think whatever brand he signs with, and obviously it's tailor-made, I think it's a home run because they'll do a really cool line, kind of hip hip line for him. And uh, even like a, probably a really cool shoe line as well. And that's that's most likely what people want. He had the most iconic Steve logo with that t-dub clearly he can't use that because yeah. nike owns it but when you look at this it also says to me as we encourage you to hit that like button for me really help the brand grow it says to me that he's really starting to look towards the end of his career because when you start having equity in a company that's also telling companies i'm not going to be out there playing very much anymore and i can't give you the value on your golf bag on your golf ball and all the stuff that they pay you for he won't be able to do that anymore so to me this is a smart move and Taylor made he's already there anyway with his clubs and his balls. I, th I think ball no, he's Bridgestone balls, but clubs with Taylor made. 
Yeah. 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 No, I mean, look, Father Time's undefeated, right? So Tiger at some point is going to step away, at least from the PGA Tour. We'll see him on the PGA Tour champions. And uh, Eddie and I will go out there and kind of uh, go out there and get him. Maybe Robert Dameron, too. But, uh, you know, I, I, as far as the, the, you know, the Nike thing goes, I think really the, the truth is, and you're going to hear this first right here on DTL Golf, they had to move that salad money over for me right here. Sorry. Mm, interesting. Now, another Nike guy, uh, <laughs> as we get into the picks on the show, before we do that, it was, it was also announced this afternoon, so everything is dropping today, that the match, which I have loved sometimes and other times has been boring as hell. And here's the latest match, gentlemen, and Eddie, I'll ask you about it first. Does this tickle your fancies at all? It's going to be Rory McIlroy, under the lights, teaming up with Lexi Thompson, to take on this week's defending champion, Max Homa, and he's going to uh, partner up with the sensation, Rose Zhang. And again, under the lights, they're going to go toe-to-toe February 26th. Does that do anything for you? It, it, no, not really. And the reason for it, it just, uh, you know, Max Homa is hilarious. I think he's hilarious. I follow him on, on X. He's He's got such a great person. He's going to have to carry that foursome. In my opinion, I don't know, you know, Rose very well. She's young, uh, you know, first year on the LPGA tour. But, uh, you know, I just I don't I'm not going to watch it. I mean, we'll get the we'll get the results afterwards. But I, I hope it does well. But I won't be I won't be tuning in. So that's just my take on it. I won't either, because, Steve, for, for the match, for the match. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to have guys that talk, and the best matches have been involving Phil Mickelson. And when he played with a like yeah. it was Tom Brady and and Peyton and Phil and Tiger. If you don't have guys that can talk that are really entertaining, we're talking 12, 18 holes, four or five hours, and Charles Barkley can't do yeah. everything on the broadcast. Does this excite <laughs> you at all? Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, personality wise, it's not jumping out at me overall, other than than Max Homa. Um, it, it's interesting when you put a golfer in the the arena like that. I mean, Terrell Hatton, we had him uh, on the range on PGA Tour Live last year, and and you would expect him to be like you know this outgoing guy that he always is. And when he was on the range, like he was where he was thinking about his game, he wasn't kind of the Terrell Hatton that you you thought of, but. I am going to watch this match because I'm a golf course junkie. I love the Park West Palm is an awesome place. About 10 minutes from uh, the Palm Beach Airport. Gil Hans designed it. it. It's it's a public facility, too. So everybody can play it. They've got a Himalayas putting green. They've got a par three course. Uh, and, and it's just it's it's an awesome facility. And I'll watch it maybe just for that. We know that the big expense, because me and Eddie know this all too well, are the lights, because in our World Long Drive (laughs) event, they would refuse to put up the lights until the very last (laughs) event. But then you find out they're spending three, four hundred thousand on bleachers. And you're like, how about using lights and people can stand and watch these events? That was eye opening. But I digress. Speaking of golf courses, gentlemen, (laughs) we got to move forward. We've got to talk about this week's event. And by the way, hit that like button for me. We need you to share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is going to grow fast. You guys know how this happens. We've already done it for three years. It's going to go fast, but we need your help. So this week, another multi-course event. It's the Farmers Insurance. As I said, Max Homa is the defending champion. And in years past, it's always been about the North course is the easy one. The South is the hard one. That's not necessarily the case. If you look at the stats now, take us through what fans can look for this week. Yeah, for me, I mean, I, ball strikers are going to step up this week. I mean, this is all, I mean, the South course particularly. And, and you know, the stats last year actually did show that the South course was, all, was about two shots harder than the North course. So it, it is a big difference, I think, between those two. You play the South course, assuming you make the cut, you play that South course three out of the four rounds. So the North course is where those guys are going out there and, you know, okay, they can shoot 64, 63, 65. So ball strikers huge. Top four finishers last year in the overall event were in the top six of strokes gained approach. Uh, and then, you know, you touched on the multiple course venue. Another one, right? Last week was three. This week is two. Uh, they're, they're both these golf courses, you know, it, it's the longest golf course on the PGA Tour of the South course, mind you. Over 7,700 yards. So this thing is a big ball. This is a fast Eddie Fernandez type of golf course right here. <laughs> Send it, you know, 360, 370. 
And we're going to talk about some of these guys who hit it a long way this week. You got to have them on your radar. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, Eddie, I got to follow a few years ago. Tiger, Dustin Johnson, and Jason Day were playing, and I just started working for the PGA Tour. They were nice enough to give me an inside-the-ropes pass. That was before COVID. And watching those three guys that all are very long hitters on tour, as long as you can hit it straight, it's a really big advantage on the south course. And as we go into this week, Max Holm is not known as a big-time hitter, but last week he was very good at getting it around. He stayed in play. And he got the job done. But for the most part, the guys that are hitting it like you do have the advantage overall. Yeah, but I, you know, I agree with Steve 100%. Ball strikers and bombers. Um, mm -hmm. if, if the guys that hit it really far are, are striking it well, hitting a lot of greens, uh, you know, those guys are going to have a huge advantage. So, I'm, you know, my picks this week kind of resemble that a little bit. Um, but it's just, it, it's so cool. That like last last week was three courses. This week is two courses, and you know the south and the um, and the north are a little bit different. Like Steve said, the south is the longest one on tour, seventy seven hundred yards. But it'll be fun. It'll be fun to see uh, see what uh, what the results are for sure. No doubt. I do. Want yeah. To plug what in. one of those? What? Oh, I just wanted to add that. Keep in mind the Monday qualifier yesterday was rained out. Was rained out. So the Ooh. golf course is soaked over there it's got to be really really wet so oh. guys who can hit the ball high and carry it far keep that in mind too it's been raining here all week i'm only 52 miles <laughs> exactly from tory pines where i'm sitting right now the sun is out today but yesterday it rained all day and it rained all weekend my son played two tournaments and he was like dad that was the hardest conditions i've ever played in in my <laughs> life he did well, T4 and a T5, so I was proud of him. But nice. it's not easy, and it's going to be wet, and it's going to be wet tomorrow. And, again, it's a Wednesday, Saturday this week, not a Thursday, Sunday. So how do you think, Eddie, that will affect the preparation yeah. since it is a day earlier? Yeah, I think I think your preparation doesn't change the day before. As long as you do exactly what you normally do from a routine standpoint, the day before you're going to play, say if it's Thursday, whatever you do Wednesday – so you'll want to do that same thing that you do Wednesday on Tuesday this week. Now, that might be maybe playing nine holes on Monday if you take Monday off or whatever. But uh, but definitely the day before the tournament, keep your routine in the way it normally is. So just instead of uh, Wednesday, it's now Tuesday. That's That's what I would say. Just keep that routine consistent. Yeah, Steve, there's a lot of players that made their way over from, you know, it's only two and a half hours. You go straight down the highway. It's not that far. So uh, at least as far as proximity, that could really help these players, yes? Yeah, I, I think so for sure. I mean, you know, probably only play nine holes one day and nine holes the other, get a sense of what both the golf courses are looking like. But, yeah, certainly an advantage, again, to those players who have played this golf course, these, this tournament in the past as well. So uh, the rookies, I think, will really have a hard time this week. There are some tournaments that if you don't know, and we talked about it last week, and it, we said that was a storyline last week, the one amateur in, in the field goes on to yeah, win. But yeah, yeah, go lot, figure. Right? Yeah. There's a lot of these courses where, where that's the case. If you show up for the first time, you don't see a lot of, of first-timers or rookies really do well on these courses. All right, you are watching DTL Golf. We're here every single week live at 3 p.m. Eastern time. You can also watch us on demand. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Turn on those notifications. Every single time we start a show, you will be notified. All right, gentlemen, we have five different categories here on the show. And remember, golf betting, everybody in the universe, it's different. The only, only, only time we encourage you to bet a full unit, or if your unit is $100, is head-to-head -head matchups. Everything else, scale it way, way back because it's very, very hard to pick golf. We're going to give you suggestions that we have. So, first-round leaders, and this is Steve Scott's special. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I can't <laughs> wait to see how Eddie does with this. So, Steve, let's start with you. Two guys you like for the first round only. Well, for the first round, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay on the North Course uh, because there's a couple guys I'm really keying on on there, and you know, depending on where you where you place your wagers, you can bet on North Course or South Course. Uh, you, but I would I'm gonna stick to the North Course. Keith Mitchell plus 3,300, and this is on Bet MGM. Uh, he was 24th last year in first round scoring, and last week he was first in strokes gained approach. He shot 62 in the final round. 
in Palm Springs. I say he carries that over again into the first round here at Torrey Pines. Uh, Sam Ryder, a guy who played really well here last year, uh, top five last year, plus 4,500 on MGM. Lots of value with Sam Ryder uh, right here. Two top tens last three years. Uh, and he opened with 64 on the North Course last year as well. So it's a golf course he plays well. I like the horses for courses theme this week. So Sam Ryder's a good pick for me. And if you're a young player out there and look at Sam Ryder, everybody complains about it. I don't have enough sponsorships. I'm not in commercials. Get creative. <laughs> Because he's been a, one of the great commercial things of all time. Multiple commercials. A lot of money. What, what would my sponsorship be? It'd be toilet paper. Yeah, it's probably, <laughs> that, that's probably true. I could go a lot of directions that's with that. I could go a lot yeah. of directions with that. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. All right, Eddie. That, that like, could be a like layup right there. <laughs> all right, oh, Eddie. We man. like one on the East Course. What do you like? Yeah, I, I agree with Steve with uh, with Keith Mitchell. I, I basically picked him for the same reason. He bombs it. Uh, you know, funny little story. He uh, I, I met him last year out in Palm Springs at the Madison Club at Discovery. I was doing a private event for the Pro-Am uh, right before the American Express. And he asked me if I could hit my driver. I was bombing drivers on 18. And he asked me if he could hit it. First one was like 127 miles an hour. The next one was 130. And my driver snapped. So, so he was just looking at both ends like this. But uh, great guy. He owes me dinner. But uh, but I like the way he's playing. He shot 62 last week. Uh, super talented. He's working on his short game. Uh, his short game is just getting so much better. And uh, really impressed with him. Uh, and also Akshay Batia. Or Batia. He's minus 15 his last five rounds average. Uh, almost one sh one stroke shots uh, strokes game putting, you know three and a half shot uh, strokes game overall total. I mean the kid is I feel like it feels like he's been on tour for 15 years and he's 21 years old. So it's uh, it's going to be an exciting week. I got uh, Batia on uh, on the south and Mitchell on the north. So that's that's why I went with those two picks. Yeah, a lot of people forget that he finally got his first PGA Tour win last year, but it was mm -hmm. uh, off the coast. It was it was it was you know a water side or river or ocean side course. So people forget sometimes when guys win late in the season or they win in the mm -hmm. fall. Better days ahead, says crazy flooding in San Diego. So something to think about. Mm -hmm. TJ Parker says you could do hair product, Steve. You could do some hair product. They're saying <laughs> you don't have to do toilet paper. Keep it, keep yeah. it smooth. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to work on that. Smooth. smooth, smooth. <laughs> all right, our next top or our next uh, subject or category here on DTL golf. Um, it's this, and this is the only bet that I will tell you. This is our bread and butter. If you truly want to make money betting on golf, stick to head to head matchups and everything else. Just sprinkle a little bit here and there. I promise you, this will be where you want to be. So, Steve, let's start with you. You got three head-to-heads, mm -hmm. and all of these are tournament matchups, mm -hmm. the whole four rounds or, uh, I guess, yes, the whole correct. rounds. Yes, go ahead. Yes, yes, yeah, the whole tournament for sure. Uh, Ludwig Ober, and it's not Aberg for those. It's Ober. Sorry. Anyway, that's what he said. Huh? Yes. Plus 105 over Sung J M. Uh, and really, I, I go for the fact that he was half a shot better all last season in strokes gained total and strokes gained off the tee. He definitely has the edge off the tee. Uh, Ludwig Ober there will be really, really solid. Justin Rose, plus 100, right on the right on the even money there. You know, the Justin Rose, this is a great Justin Rose golf course. Horses for courses. Justin Rose has had four top tens in the last six events here as far as including a victory. He really loves the golf course. Shane Lowry, uh, you know, not so sure about what, but he's all bringing to the table on this one. Uh, but last season, Rose had the edge in strokes gain total, approach to the green, around the green, and in putting. He won Pebble Beach last year, too, to Justin Rose. Very similar Poana conditions. I like Justin Rose here. Uh, and this this was a tough one. Max Homa, minus 110 over Patrick Cantlay. Uh, defending champion Max Homa really feel like he has the edge. Uh, a lot because Patrick Cantley, if you all know, if you read and you know done your research a little bit, uh, he's on the the PGA Tour policy board. There's a lot of stuff going down right now. They're trying to get this framework agreement figured out, and and Patrick Cantley is on that policy board. His mind is not completely on golf right now. 
And, and Max Homa, he loves this golf course, and he's done great here. Uh, and, you know, the defending champ has almost a one full shot per round advantage on strokes gain approach last season. So Max Homa in that one. We know what that did for Rory McIlroy. He leaves the policy board, and he's winning all over the world right now, including last week. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. Dubai. Now, Eddie. Eddie, you think Eddie, this game's yeah. mental? Yeah. No, I, I, maybe. Now, Eddie, I know you're kind of new to this <laughs> golf betting thing, and you're new to DTL, <laughs> but I'm about to teach Steve Scott a little lesson, so I really want you to pay attention here, and I really want you to learn from the expert because as you see with my three head-to-heads, that my mm -hmm. middle one is I like Sanjay over Ludwig mm -hmm. Aubert. Now, <laughs> Sanjay last year uh. was a top 10 at this event. Last week, he played really, really well. Who is the rookie this week? Well, it wouldn't be Sanjay M. So is Steve Scott talking out of both sides of his mouth, or are we going to have some type <laughs> of a showdown right here and right now? We'll figure <laughs> that out. But to me, I'm going for <laughs> that has performed on this course before. And I like Sanjay. And we'll see. That's the beauty right. of the show. We never talk about our picks before the show. And then we see who no. is right. And I love that. So All we're right. opposite. Of that. Now, my other two, Keegan Bradley over Eric Cole. Keegan was a second-place finish last year. I think Eric Cole, love him, reigning rookie of the year. But he's not a big player. He's not a long hitter. His game, in my opinion, does not suit this course. He's playing there because... He didn't become a PGA Tour player until he got into his 30s. He has openly said, I'm going to play as many tournaments as I could possibly play because I got started late. So I love Keegan, who was in second place last year. And Xander, well, Xander is the betting favorite to win this week. Last week, he played great. He shot, what, 27 uh, under. He played great. And this is his home course. This is the one that he wants to win more than anything. He's the only player that his winning odds are less than plus 1,000. So, yes, Colin Morikawa played well last year. And, yes, Colin Morikawa played well in the first mm -hmm. event of the year. But Xander is coming off a good win. Morikawa hasn't played in three weeks. I like Xander at minus 120 over Colin. Mm -hmm. All three of these plays, you can find them at DraftKings. All right, Eddie, give me your two, sir. Yeah, you know, Sahith Tagala, he's impressive. Right down the street, grew up right down the street, went to Pepperdine, had a great career there. Finished second at the century. Uh, shot like 73 under par. <laughs> but uh, I, I just like, he's in good form. I know he didn't play that great at Sony. But uh, but I like him over Minwoo Lee. He's, you know, he just has this this presence about him when I see him play. He's got everything. He doesn't, he, it seems like he loves the spotlight and he doesn't mind the pressure. And uh, I'm a big fan of his. He's a, he's a great young player. And uh, I just I, – I just my gut says I did some research on the both of them, uh, even though Minwoo Lee's been playing pretty well too, and he absolutely annihilates it. But uh, I got Tigala uh, over Minwoo Lee in this one. And then, uh, you know, Ludwig Ober over Sung J M. I'm with Mr. Scott on this one. Oh, and, uh, double hey, showdown. You know, hey, Look at uh, yeah. Ober. Hey, Ober, he cruises at 183 to 185 off the tee box. He's got no weaknesses. I mean, this kid literally cruises with everything. No matter what the shot, no matter you know what he's doing, he, he doesn't have a weakness in my opinion. And he's he's gonna be very tough. I like him over Sung Jay, even though Sung Jay is playing well. But uh, but like I like Steve said, horses for courses. I got uh, I got Ober over Sung Jay against you, coach. Okay, yeah. so here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Because next Thursday, right. our merch store will, will be ready. So, and yeah. I haven't even asked the guys, and we'll talk about it after the show, but here's what I want to do. If I beat them, then they will each put $50 in. We're going to be sending merch coupons out. So you guys can buy anything you want from our merch store. Not a co It'll be like directly like money to you. So we'll do like 20 bucks. We'll discuss it after show and we'll tweet it out. But if I beat if I beat them, yeah. they have to combine. They have to combine theirs and send somebody out that we'll have in the chat. There will be a winner. So it's not going to be me that wins. But if I lose, then I will have a full one. So we'll figure that out. As soon as the merch store is up, it'll be a lot easier to do that. But All when right. I beat them both this Game week, on. Game on. Trust me. Trust me. Believe. Trust and believe. I will strong, be strong words program. there, Coach. Strong You're words. Damn right. We're going to be doing this every week. We're going to be doing <laughs> right. it. And Love the it. chat and the universe 
they will be the recipients. All right, moving on to category number three. I love this already. I love you boys so much. I love a good battle. Finishing <laughs> positions. This could be anything. Top five, top 10, top 20. There are top 30s. There are even top 40s at certain books. The numbers are always coming down. So, Steve Scott, you've got a lot yep. you like over there. Yep. In fact, in that yep. top 40 market as well. Talk to me. A lot. And I'll, I'll go through these quickly. Ryan Fox, plus 100. He's the 32nd ranked player in the world, a guy you don't probably know anything about. He's made 15 of the last 17 cuts worldwide. He's got some massive distance, doesn't rely on his putter very much. This is a great venue for Ryan Fox. Rio Hisat Suni, another name you don't know because he was in the top 10 on the DP World Tour. That's a European tour last year to get his PGA Tour card. In 18 of his last 25 starts, He's been in the top 40. I bet you didn't know that. So he's a guy that you that's going to be rising up the world rankings. Rio, jump on him as well for something this week, even if it's not that. Uh, Min Ru Lee uh, in the top 20. This guy's got the ball speeds in the low 190s. We got to let him cook. That's his, that's his <laughs> catchphrase. So we're going to let Min Woo cook this week in the top 20. If you want to get a little higher than the top 20, you can fry him on the frying pan a little higher. Saeed Tagala, plus 160, went to nearby in Pepperdine, right up the road from you there, Coach. Uh, not too far down the road. He knows this coastal weather. He, uh, in the last 12 events in California, he's made 12 cuts, runner-up at the Century uh, a couple weeks ago, playing really solid golf. And then Justin Rose, plus 200, four top 10s, uh, five top 20s in the last six farmers. This guy loves this golf course. He loves the atmosphere out there. Uh, Justin Rose should be in everybody's picks this week for sure. Now, Min Woo Lee, I don't know if everybody saw it, but he had a video uh, on X at PGA Tour where he took everybody through some of his practice rounds last week. This dude is humbly arrogant, as I like to call him. He said he has a new driver in the bag. He said it's performing so well, I'm just going to pull it out on every hole last week. That's humbly arrogant. And Eddie knows all about pulling a big driver out of the bag and just letting it rip. So you got two picks right here. And you also disagree with me when it comes to Eric Cole. Explain yourself, sir. Yeah. You know, Eric, I got to talk to him at Golfer Cops, which you were there, coach. Uh, he's, he's so poised, right? Even though he's, uh, you know, he's in his thirties, he's not really a, 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 your typical rookie, but you know, he's such a good player. He's such a good ball striker. He can hit every shot in the book. Uh, I love his, I love his attitude. It's like, he's got the shortest memory out there. He just, he just kind of goes about his business. And, and I remember at the Honda, how he, he, you know, faced a little adversity there and, and uh, you know, he, he almost won the tournament. And I just, I just like him as a player. Got to chat with him a little bit uh, a few are uh, in December at the golf, at golfer cops and, and I just like him at uh, at plus three thirty uh, for a top ten. And then Hideki, right? I've I've watched Hideki hit about three thousand golf balls, and he absolutely flushes it. He's one of the best ball strikers out there. And you know, it's a ball strikers golf course. And he's starting to play. He's starting to play pretty well. He, uh, you know, if he gets the putter a little bit hot, I think he can be really dangerous out there. And he loves uh, he loves the West Coast, and uh, he loves Tory. So that's that's why I picked Hideki. Steve, do you notice all the name dropping we have going on on the show from Eddie Fernandez? Oh, I'm on his team. I saw him hit 3,000. Oh, no, I talked to Eric Cole like last December. Oh, I hit oh, I hit bombs with Keith Mitchell. It's like drop, drop, yeah. drop, drop, right? Yeah. That's not, that's not, yeah it's, I'm gonna, it's no hot. It's my, my experience. That's all. <laughs> oh, well, of course, but we're, we're always going to bust each other's chops. Now, real quick, a couple know, things from I the know. chat. Uh, Charlie yeah. says, which books are these matchups available at? Please, superb show. Thank you, Charlie. Thank mm -hmm. you. I think all of them are DraftKings or BetMGM, correct? Anybody mm -hmm. use anything yes. else? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So yeah, Draft only, only my head-to-heads only my head -to -heads were not on uh, MGM. There you go. Yeah, because sometimes you got to understand, guys, that sports books release plays at different times. And sometimes it's before the show, sometimes after the show. So we'll always use those two. But BetMGM, they're, they're our guys. And you may or may not see them in the next few weeks. Who knows? Letting out that information. Uh, by the way, also, uh, Steve, you can allude to this. Uh, do we have new tunes for the showdown yet? We're getting to all this stuff. We're rolling stuff out. But we do have music 
provided by somebody very special. Yes, Steve? Uh, yeah, my uh, my 15-year-old son is a beat master, uh, JC. He is uh, unbelievable, and he's got the intro for the show, the outro, all the – everything's coming, so – Absolutely. We are uh, we're letting this we're letting this thing cook here on the music scene, too. Yeah, it's a family affair here at Driving the Line. We don't let him watch. The show. This is the betting show. We don't let him watch. We just use his music. We just use his music. All right. Quickly, my four. I love Xander this week. Top 10. I just think that he's really starting to play well. We've seen him very quietly. He doesn't even look like he's enjoying himself right now. He's just going out there birdie after birdie. I like him. Top 10. Home course, he loves this tournament. Jason Day has always played well here, and he's playing really well, one in December. And the longer the golf course and the lower the score, the better I like this guy. Sanjay played great here last year, played good last week. I just think he's in form. I don't love the odds, but you got to understand that the, the sports books are starting to figure it out. And with so many new players coming in, I would rather protect myself with the top 20 than give you a plus 210 at a top 10 and then have them come in at T14 and you're like, what did I do? So that's why I'm playing the top 20s at those numbers. And then Keegan Bradley, he lost in a playoff two weeks ago in Hawaii. And he also was second last year right here. So he's in form. Plus, he loves this golf course. I love that top 20 number at plus 150. All right, moving on to our winners section of the show. Now, we're not telling you that we're picking all of these to win. Understand, I if, if your normal bet size is $100, I would put $5 on a winner. It's very difficult. If you pick one winner all year, that's a really good pick. Got to remember, 156 players every single week. So with that being said, Eddie, let me start with you. Clearly, we agree on this. Why do you like Jason Day to potentially be in the mix on Sunday? Yeah, past champion, uh, finished... Tied for third in 2022, tied for seventh in 2023, finished tied for 10th this year at the Century minus uh, 24 under par, and then the Amex minus 18, tied for 34th. He's just in really good form, and I just love how how much better his swing has gotten since he started working with Chris Como. Uh, much deeper into that right hip. He's got much better motion, much better flow in his golf swing. He's not restricting anything. And he's, you know, we all know what in, what an incredible short game he has. So I just, uh, I, I love his attitude. I love where he's at. And uh, he's my pick for this week. He's got a great record there. And uh, I think he's going to get it done. I don't need to say any more than that on Jason Day. Keegan, I just told you, tied for second last year, plus 3,500. I try to give you guys a player at all the different price points, and you guys know me. I don't like to play anything less than plus 1,000. I just like Xander this week, so I put him on there, but at plus 900, I do not recommend betting that because the return on your investment is much smaller than the odds of you losing that bet. I just think he's going to play really well this week, and he could win. So I put him on there, but I personally am not going to bet that much on him because it's just it's not worth it to me. To me, mm -hmm. Steve Scott, talk to me. Yeah, I, I talked about Justin Rose before, plus five thousand at Bet MGM. I mean, he always plays great here, so you got to put a little something on Justin Rose because he just he loves this place so much. But Tony Finau at plus twenty five hundred. His game matches up so well with this place. I mean, the way this golf course is laid out, the South Course especially, there are some very tucked hole locations. And so you have to hit very towering iron shots and drop and stop them in a very small area. You can't hit these low screamers and expect them to stop. They're going to bounce over the green, down the canyons, and all this sort of stuff is not good. Tony Finau has got the game, and he can hit it up in the stratosphere and drop it down like a butterfly with sore feet. A butterfly <laughs> with sore feet. I like that. I haven't heard that I one like in a while. That. I love that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Steve brings up a good point. Last week, if you got down in your head-to-heads, individual rounds, you, nobody was moving backwards. Mm -hmm. But this course, there is a double bogey waiting around every single corner. Mm -hmm. So you got to be very, very careful if you're a player. TJ says, best feeling in sports betting, hitting a pre Tournament winner. DJ, you're dead. There's nothing better than predicting it and watching it play out. It's the absolute best if you're a golf better. There is nothing better. A quick uh, question from Tom from Pittsburgh, and either one of you can take this one. Do you think um, – I'll come to you first, Eddie, because you picked a decky. Do you think a decky finishes above Sunjay? Top Asian on FanDuel has a decky at plus – if normally there's five players in these type of bets. Mm. Oh, man, that's a good one. Ah. Uh. I, I would say Sung Jay's in a little bit better form right now. 
uh, I would probably say no. I would say Sung Jay probably has a slight edge over Hideki. So I would probably have to say Sung Jay over Hideki in that respect. But I, I, I think they're both going to finish in the top 10. But mm-hmm. I, I would kind of give that slight edge to Sung Jay M. And, and Steve, this is a really good way if people have the ability with the books. If you don't like a player like top 20 or top 10, you can do this. Mm-hmm. And then you just got to beat four players. Yeah. But they're very yeah. good at grouping these four players, too, or five players. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're really good. They're all have very similar skill set. So yeah, be very careful and watch. I mean, the, it's the most recent form with some players. Hideki, you know, can be a little bit injury prone too. And if you get a cool morning or whatnot out there, who, who knows? Hopefully not. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that all takes. All right, the last category on our show, and we're always going to go about 40 to 45 minutes. If you are wondering, if you can't catch us live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, we encourage you to catch us on demand. You normally would have 24 to 48 hours to watch this show. You do not have that ability this week. First tee time is tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, live from San Diego, Wednesday to Saturday. So long shots. And this is the category where my guys can put anything that is kind of our cutoff is plus 5,000 or higher, or you could put group betting here, or you could put anything that's crazy at a sports book. This is the category for that. So Steve, you like a guy at plus 5,000 that a lot of people Mm -hmm. probably don't know. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a few people in this field. And I know the horses for courses thing is is definitely something you need to lead towards. But uh, Ludwig Hebert is a great one. Um, but Nikolai Hoygaard at plus 5,000. And it's a guy, he's never played here, but his game just fits. The, it's this long ball game. He can reach ball speeds of 190 plus in competition. Had a great week last week. He's flying all the way over from Dubai. He's tied for seventh over there. Uh, and in and, and his last 10 events, he's had five top sevens. So he's playing really well. He's on form. So his driver's going long. It's going straight. He's going to have a huge advantage on the longest course on the PGA Tour, which is the South Corey Pines. So Nick Boygaard. And Eddie, you really embrace the long shots homework. You truly did. Yes. You're going I north a plus 13,000. <laughs> Talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. Austin <laughs> Ekro, I mean, great player in college, uh, Oklahoma State. Look, he's he's ranked number one in total driving so far this year. He's 15th in distance mm-hmm. and third in accuracy, which is number one total driving. And we all know you have to drive it really well. Not only is he hitting it far, he's hitting about almost 314 yards for drive, but he's hitting it straight as well. Uh, he finished second last year in his first year on tour. And uh, I just, a player like that who's hitting it long and straight, if he gets, you know, he's not, he hasn't had the best ball striking uh, approach, but he, uh, if he has a good week, who knows? Uh, I like uh, I, I like him to win. He's a heck of a talent, and I think he's going to be here for years to come. And I, you know, Michael Block is, you know, I think we all want a Block party. I would love to see him make the top ten. I think you know what he did at the PGA Why last not? year was absolutely <laughs> incredible. So you know what? Talk about long shots. We'll go Michael Block plus fifteen thousand for a top ten. I mean, God, he he finished top. He finished uh, tied for 15th at the PGA Championship against the greatest players in the world. Why can't he do it in his backyard here, mm-hmm. Tory? But let me ask you this question, because he's played in a lot of tournaments since that. Is, is there a limit? Did he qualify for a certain – because it seems like he's played a lot on the PGA Tour since last week. Steve, enlighten me, please. Yeah, he's the Southern California PGA Player of the Year, something he's won, I think, about 11 times. So when you win that, you get into the PGA Tour events within your section. Uh, he played oh. in Cabo. Cabo. The event in Cabo in the fall was part of that. And then he played the Amex, and now he's playing this week because it's all considered Southern California PGA section. Hashtag educate and entertain. That's why I have my guys. I had no idea. Now, cool little nugget, my son's first oh. coach. His name's Alex. He just went from our club uh, where Michael Block teaches is less than five minutes from where I'm sitting right now. Buck 75 was what he charged before the PGA Championship. What do we think he's at now for those lucky few that gets a Michael Block? Go up from there, Eddie. Are you kidding me? That's a discount right around there. 375. 375 for a cool 45 minutes with Michael Block. And he says, man. You should be teaching around there, Coach. I mean, with your whole with your whole one recently, you should be teaching around there. 
I mean, I mean, you yeah. had to bring it up. Yeah, I had a hole in one two weeks ago, and then the very next day, I was four inches yeah. from another hole in one on the same hole. It's just what I do. Oh I mean, my goodness! But Steve, you got a little bitter. Have you either never had one or have you had one? <laughs> yeah, I've had one. I've had one. We're tied in the hole in one department, and that's frustrating well, me a little two. bit. I've had oh, two. I've had two. Yeah, that's. Yeah, well, that's that's okay. Well, then that's really disappointing. Then <laughs> I was 21 years old, 21 years old, so there was almost 28 years in between my hole and ones. And now it makes mini me golf doesn't better. count. Though. Mini golf doesn't count. Listen to the bitterness, Eddie. Oh, to the to the jealousy, I love the it. Jealousy of I all love that. It. Let's go. Oh, Let's my go. goodness, the jealousy. Oh, <laughs> uh, Japan says, Coach, can you get your son to help me with my game? You got two of the greatest coaches in America right here on the screen. But <laughs> I'll bring my son on at some point. But uh, these are hey, great. I want to see his swing, coach. I want to see his swing. I uh, know. As we grow, because this is only week two for us. But as we grow, I can tell you, with all the sincerity in the world, we're not just building a show. We're just not here to, you know, ha you know, chop it up every single week. We are here to grow the game. We are here to educate you. We are here. We're going to do series. We're going to do series on swing speed, on courses. We just have to get the team up and get going. So remember, this is week number two for the rebrand. But we're going to be here for the next 25 years. So you guys have any ideas? Eddie, sit down. I know the light went off. Oh, that thing is. <laughs> See, I am in Cabo. Now you're just. <laughs> oh, what a clean finish! What a clean finish to the show. What a beautiful, wonderful finish. <laughs> All right, real quick. Oh, 15 God, that was, seconds. That's awesome. <laughs> Fifteen seconds on our final thoughts heading into the Farmers Insurance, Steve. Let's go. Yeah, just looking forward to uh, continuing this on, and we're gonna we're gonna see uh, some of the big hitters in golf really rise to the top this week. And it's not gonna be a putting contest like it was last week at the Amex. This week is all about guys who can really stripe it. So looking forward to uh, watching all of that. Eddie, talk to me. Yeah, you know, if, if the beginning of twenty twenty four is any foreshadowing of what's to come, it's gonna be an incredible year. Uh, you got Chris Kirk, Grayson Murray, and Nick Dunlap, uh, three winners that you really wouldn't have picked those guys going into the week. But how about this? In 20 months, we could have Mr. Aubert and Mr. Dunlap in the Ryder Cup. What do you think about that? Head-to-head -head on Sunday? You never know. That could be something 15 to 20 years yeah. down the road we could be watching. How, uh, how cool is that? That is if the captains stop picking their friends to be on the Ryder <laughs> Cup team. That is something yeah, he's that he's not going to need a pick, though. That kid's going to make yeah. They're both going to make Correct. the team on points. They're people so are thousand loving percent. Eddie. People are loving Eddie. Coach, where did you find Fast Eddie? I am. I I, I find diamonds <laughs> in the rough. Where did I find Fast Eddie? It's where, where did Fast Eddie find us? That's the question. This is a world long drive champion. He works with PGA Tour pros on distance. That's the future of the game. So, Eddie, I know that you've got big plans for us here at Driving the Line, DTL, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. It's going to be fun. We uh, what, what I'd like to do too, Coach, is maybe uh, pick a winner every so often to uh, maybe I'll do a little uh, swing analysis for, for one of our guests and, and kind of put it side by side by mine and give them a little, give them some tips where I, uh, through my coaching app. So it'll be a lot of fun to do that. Wait a second. Might be Using something technology? we could do in the future. Using technology yeah. to help get people at home? We can, we can do yeah. that. Yeah. We're allowed Imagine to Imagine that. Interesting. Imagine very, that. Very interesting. Oh, that's exactly That'll what we're going to do. We got so many plans for you. Give me my one shot because I can tell you this. Next week, next week, we've got a first partner coming in the show. Check out Good Boy Golf. They've got incredibly well-priced gear. They do a lot of different things. They're going to come on the show with us. We're going to do a giveaway. We're also going to have an item that they're going to that's really, really popular at their store, and you're going to have the ability to have it really good price. We're going to bring companies on all the time. And as we grow, we grow our partnership. So the first one, Good Boy Golf, joining us right here on DTL next week. So with all that being said, what a good show. What a good show. Enjoy the Farmer's Insurance Wednesday to Saturday. Quick plug, Sunday, Golf Channel, APGA. It's a very important tour. I will be on the call on Golf Channel on the same course, the south course at the Farmer's, the day after they are finished. So with all that being said, there's only one thing left to do. And I believe you all know what that is. You've got your marching orders. Let's take all of these 
farmers insurance tickets straight to the pay window. For my entire group, global, Fast Eddie Fernandez, my man Steve Scott, everybody working behind the scenes to make this show look like a million bucks. I am the coach. Just trying to keep this train on said track. We grind for you so we can win with you. It's truly what we're all about right here at DTL Golf. Good luck.